Stafford is ready. Bengals bring a late blitz. Well protected. Stafford throws. Oh, a rope over the middle. Caught at the Bengals' 40. It's Bryson Hopkins moving the chains on third down and nine. The son of former Oilers and Titans all-pro tackle Brad Hopkins. Now he's got a catch in the Super Bowl. Hello and welcome to a new episode of Rams Reveal presented by NFL All Day. I'm JB Long and this is our new studio space at the Rams facility in Thousand Oaks. And we're pleased to have a first time new guest on the show as well. It's B-Hop, Rams tight end Bryson Hopkins. Uh, I know you haven't been in our old studio space, but you have been walking by this room, probably wondering what's going on in here. What do you think of how it came out? Uh, I just said earlier, every time I come by, it, it Definitely changes. Something looks good, but it's it's overall, it's, it's elevating every time I walk by. So I like what you're doing in here. All right. Well, thank you uh, yeah. for helping us break it in on this edition yeah. of Rams Reveal. Looking forward to getting out more about you uh, personally and professionally. Uh, but give me the team perspective first. As you come back for week two after a weekend away, what's the temperature of the Rams coming off of that disappointing loss to the Bills? Uh, definitely motivated. I say, you know, anybody coming off a loss like this, it's definitely a humbling experience, um, which I'd say, if anything, we need. Um, and you know, credit to the bills, of course, they're not a bad squad. They're really good. And, and I think it just said a lot about what we needed to do and, um, in order to attack this next week and this team. So, um, I think everybody's on the same track now Mm. and, uh, it's, it's, it's a good feeling to come in and kind of just get straight to work. I don't expect you to break down a whole game for me here in one podcast, but what happened? Like highest level, what happened? Uh, I just think, uh, we just didn't come out as prepared as we needed to be. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think uh, we just need to get in our flow. You know, everybody, uh, we just, um, even though we started off slow, you know, that's not to preach on anything about last year or any year before, but, you know, not every team who's won a Super Bowl the previous year and then is trying to go do the same thing the next year wins their first game. And, right. you know, it's just, it's not a, uh, it's not determining of everything that's what it's going to be, but we're definitely, um, Um, All on the same track now, like I said, and and it's something that is going to motivate us just to be better in the future. When you reference that dose of humility maybe being necessary, does does that imply a sense of, hey, we were probably reading our press clippings there or thinking we were more than we were ready to be? Yeah, uh, to be honest, I don't think we were really. I I think we everybody was on the same page in the fact that last year is last year and it has nothing to do with this year. We can't ride the high of being the champions. Um, You got to keep going and, you know, um, and move on to to the next play, just like you do in a game. So that's what we're trying to do here. Bryson, it's so rare as a professional football player to have a weekend off, to be able to put your feet up on a Sunday, uh, aside from the disappointment of the loss. What was that like? How'd you put it to use? Oh, it was good. I, I, you know, you don't, during the season, you don't usually get to see um, other teams play and and it just kind of, even if you're not scouting, you're just watching for fun, or maybe you got a buddy on the team uh, that's playing that you want to watch. That was definitely good to just sit up and be a fan for a little bit. But, um, uh, yeah, we enjoy those weekends as rarely as they do come. Any friends around the league outside this facility that you did have? Um, your eye yeah, on? I've got. Um, well, I was typically like Rondale. I wanted to see Rondale play, and then uh, I wanted to see Marcus play. Uh, Marcus Bailey for the uh, Bengals because you know, kind of got that little uh, rivalry going. Now that's one of my best friends, but I'm um, just a couple guys. Uh, yeah, nice. All right, so how are you a different player and also a person at what now age 25? And in your uh, third season as a professional football player. How am I a person outside of football? How are you? How are you different? Maybe coming into this year than you might've been. How how have you grown as a person and a player in year three? Um, Just for anybody being in a system, any type of environment, you know, it takes time to sink in and and get accustomed to um, the relationships that you're trying to build with people and, and just being used to being in this setting. And I think that's one thing that is inevitably going to happen as time is going to go by and I'm going to get more comfortable in my setting and, and just with the people around me and understanding more of my role with every given day and also my capabilities and my potential, what I can do. Um, and making other people realize that as well, you know, see, but yeah, not, um, being too confident or cocky or conceited, but um, just, you know, level-headed and and ready to take on any task that they ask me to do. Sure. By reputation, Sean McVay's offense, not easy to pick up. Yeah. And playing tight end at this level, maybe the hardest position to acclimate to. Would you Besides agree with those assessments? Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah I would. Well, you don't acclimate to quarterback. You're yeah. usually a quarterback for a long time. So, uh, yeah, I, I would definitely agree. Um, having to know everything about an offense and read the defense um, is definitely something that doesn't make the, your job easy, but it's what you're expected to do, you know, at a certain level. And other players are better at it than other players, and it might separate the two in some way. But um, here on the Rams, I think we've we've got some pretty smart and talented tight ends. So. You don't want to switch to quarterback, do you? Uh, no, at negative. I'll leave that to Matthew. Yeah, <laughs> let, let, let the dogs be the dogs. Yeah. Tell me if this is a stretch, but I was trying to draw a parallel maybe between uh, now, this experience with the Rams, and what you did in college, right? You come in. You're a wide-eyed high school student still in some respects. You're red shirt. Maybe you get a taste as a sophomore. Now this is a, essentially your junior year of yeah. professional football. <laughs> you're on the depth chart. You're active on game day. And I think that's where at Purdue you started to see some results. Am I right? Well, I just – I think at Purdue it was a little easier because, you know, you don't have such a big expectation coming in. You know, it's not your job. It is your job, but, you know, you're not getting – paid to do it at least now they are which <laughs> sucks for me because I, I just missed it literally but uh uh yeah I, I think that you're, there are kind of similarities in the way that that path um kind of started and mm -hmm. the way that I'm feeling about you know being comfortable here in LA in this big city especially coming from Purdue you know coming all the way out here Nashville is a big city but LA I don't even know where the city is it's just everywhere mm -hmm. like everywhere is LA so um <laughs> But definitely just getting more comfortable and, and you know, the like I said earlier, the more time goes by, the more comfortable I'm going to get. Hopefully the more opportunities I get, um, the more they see I can do, the better. Oh, yeah. Long way from West Lafayette. Long, long way. Uh, the only other big difference I noticed in year three is that tight end room must be a little lonely. Just you and Tyler in there? Yeah. You're doing all right? How, how have you decorated? You know, we're holding it down. Okay. I have not decorated. Luckily, I came in COVID year. So I didn't have to do all that stuff. They were like, stay away from each other. So I didn't have to come in and do the Christmas decorations or I did have to go get coffee and like Popeyes and stuff sometimes, but it wasn't that bad. But yeah, it, it, it's okay. We're, we'll hold it down in there. How do you operate as a tandem, you and Tyler? Um, you know, he, he's the guy, of course, he's the leader, you know, um, we're, we're not saying he has any control or anything, but I'm definitely uh, willing to take advice from him, you know, given his record. He's a, he's a great tight end. He's got good skill set, and uh, he's smart. He knows what he's doing, and mm -hmm. obviously he's done well for himself. So if I can kind of mirror what he's doing, and hopefully it'll help me do well for myself, I wouldn't mind doing what he does. It's a good gig, so yeah. Totally. Uh, Bryson, I asked Sean McVay on this week's Coach McVay show, about going week one to week two and Tyler having the majority of the offensive snaps against the Bills. Yeah. What things you're doing behind the scenes to earn his trust and how you might get on the field more? Here's what he had to say. And he's a guy that, you know, he's got a lot of things that he can present in the past game. I think there's more to be had. I mean, you look at the block that he made at the point of attack last year on fourth and one. That's a big time block on Hubbard. And so uh, his ability, he made a key block on on one of the screens that came out big for, for Cooper the other night. Did a great job of being able to redirect in space on Taron Johnson, who's mm -hmm. a really good player for them. Uh, talking about the Bills game, but um, you know, it's just that, that steady progress. Thomas has, has really done a great job of kind of wrapping his arms around him, helping him continue to become a complete player, but we trust Tyler a lot, but I do think there's some opportunities to get Bryson more involved without a doubt. Uh, so having heard that and being part of a two-man room, like what is your take on how these extra reps might help you in practice get on the field more on Sundays? Um, really, that's all it is for me is repetition, and that's what it's always been. Just let me get my hands on and just really do it and go through the steps, um, be there like in the moment physically. And um, that's the best way for me to learn. So if I can do it, whether it's in practice or even in a game, like, mm -hmm. you know, um, just uh, adaptability and just getting adjusted. It's really all I need. And, and I'm more of a um, see, do type of person. So um, that's something that can help me go a long way. The more reps that I get, um, no matter the setting. Yeah. yeah no, I, people may not understand how hard it is to get practice opportunities yeah. at the professional level, smaller roster than yeah. college, but also the focus is really at the active uh, game day roster. Yeah. And I also don't want to give the impression that for you or for anyone, it's only a matter of time before you get your chance in the NFL. Cause it's not always how it yeah. plays out. Um, especially when you're at the, the most competitive um, point of the sport, I guess, there might have even been some days in years one and year two where you wondered, hey, what's going on? Is this ever going to happen for me? How do I break through? Is that accurate? Like, Yeah, I mean, for most guys in the NFL, there's there's always that that 
period of time where you think, you know, well, is this just because this isn't going the way I thought it was, mm -hmm. is it, do I want to stay on this path or do I want to, you know, try and do something new, not even new other than football, but try something new, like a new routine or anything. But um, really for me, it was just sticking with my gut. You know, I know I'm, I'm where I'm supposed to be um, through thick and thin. My parents raised me to just, you know, keep chugging, just keep going. You, you see the brighter days. Um, and that's kind of what I've been doing, you know, just last year, not getting all the reps that I wanted to, you know, not even being active in some games mm -hmm. and then, uh, just kind of having the ending that it did as surreal as it was, you know, it wasn't where I wanted to be just cause we won the last game. Doesn't mean that I didn't want to play in the other games before. Sure. Um, but it, it definitely helped me adjust into the system. Like I said, so, um, it's all about, it's all up from here is what I would say. You know, that's what everybody's got to say, but it's truly, you never know. Yeah. yeah. Well, let me dig in a little bit there because I have to say one of my least favorite things about the NFL is purely the inactives on game day. Yeah. Like that's unique to this part of the sport. Whereas in college, if you're down the depth chart, as long as you're healthy, you're dressing on game day and anything could happen. So you're mentally there. What's yeah. it like to be inactive on a day where your team's playing? Well, I think the worst part is, being uncertain whether you're going to be active or not. So you have to prepare mentally sure. for something that might not even happen. And when you don't know what that is or when it's going to happen, it's kind of a little bit harder to do. Um, but, you know, it's, of course, that's what you get paid to do right yeah. there is be there in case they need you if you're in that position. Um, and that's exactly what happened. You know, if if they need you, it would suck if you didn't know anything and they needed you all of a sudden, then it'd look really bad. So now, you know, you got to kind of roll with, with, with the dice that you're given. Yeah. To be honest, I came in a little bit on the fence about whether to go back to the Super Bowl, uh, especially having not played a game here in 2022. It feels so last year, right? Yeah. Um, but it's such an integral part of your personal story. I do want to take you there if that's okay. Yeah. Um, and there was a two week buildup like there is for any Super Bowl that was probably different through your lens, knowing that Tyler got hurt in the NFC championship game and that you were going to be built into that game plan. Yeah. Is that fair to say? And what was yeah, that like to go through? Um, honestly, I've told a lot of people this. It was kind of been, I, I'm grateful for the two week build. Of course, the more time I can get to build up for a Super Bowl, the better or a big game like that. Um, but it was kind of easy. Honestly, it was, it was like I was just, it, it, it had kind of been happening slowly over the course of the year, even when Higgs um, was still up because I had been kind of working my my um, reps in practice, kind of showing some ability. Maybe I could be use of the offense. So they kind of started putting me up on the active roster and then on special teams a little bit. And so that kind of started going. And then by the time Higgs got hurt. It was kind of like, okay, well, I've had these reps before. I know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. uh, Kendall's here. He can. He's gonna take these reps. I'm gonna take these reps. We're gonna talk and just communicate. And it really wasn't that hard, to be honest. It, I, I felt good the whole two weeks going in, uh, at least um, like in terms of mental preparation. It wasn't a play like I was sure, like, oh, I don't know what to. It was everything, and, and it was under control. I was calm. So, how about was, that second quarter first catch? I think it was 16 yards. The, the was the third down, right? Or, yeah. yeah. Kind of um, settle in. Yeah, yeah. That was uh, definitely a nice little ball from Matthew. I've I seen that coming in. Um, won't say I was surprised. You're never supposed to be surprised. But as soon as I turned, it was like perfectly like right there. And I was, I was like, wow, he's, yeah, he's good. And yeah, he's really good. <laughs> fans of the Rams will be talking about that fourth quarter game winning drive forever. Yeah. Um, your part in it was instrumental in more ways than one. Let's start with third and two from your own 45, the catch that you made. How how special a memory will that always be for you? You know, that's not always the first option, but it's third and two. You just need easy yardage. So um, I sat it down and I looked in and once again, the ball's <laughs> right there. It's coming to me. So the easy part, as soon as I catch it, it's, as long as I'm past those two yards, is good. That was uh, about as easy as a third and two as it'll probably get. So, yeah. And I skipped a play intentionally that I'd like to go back to now because uh, I want to know how your father would grade the uh, fourth and one block on oh, Cooper yeah. Cup's fly sweep. Yeah, he actually told me, he was like, dang, that's better than any block that I've ever had before. And <laughs> no, I'm kidding. He would never, ever say that ever. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he did He did say after the game, like he didn't, he ran onto the field and mm -hmm. he was like, I don't know if he got four words out before it was like, dude, that fourth and one, that fourth 
that fourth down block or whatever he said. Of course, he was talking about the game before the fact that we won it. But yeah, <laughs> you know, your father, Brad, came so close to a title denied by the Rams. In fact, I yeah. wonder what it mean to share that ring with him. Um, you know, he's he's always he means the world to me. I mean, the world to him. Um, he just wants to see me succeed no matter what it is. Um, and I think if anything, he was just more proud than I'll ever be able to understand, you know, until maybe I have a son one day and maybe he goes and beats my team in the Super Bowl or something like that. I don't know. But um, he tells me often how proud he is of me. So I appreciate that. Same with mom. Can't forget mom. Mom and dad. And then yeah. you're the oldest of three children. Yeah. Yeah. Tell us about your brother and sister. Colin and Gentry. Colin is my younger brother. He's 24. He's a clown. He got me this shirt here. Simpsons guy? Yeah. He, no, he's not even. He just is a meme guy. He just likes these, uh, just these clownish things. And I chose the word today. So, yeah, it's, he'll he'll appreciate that. Um, you lean more SpongeBob. Is that right? Oh, everybody leans more SpongeBob. But this is kind of right before SpongeBob's time, you know. Um I'm not that old, but, you know, um, <laughs> but it's good that you get all the social media memes that come. From I get SpongeBob. everything. Yeah. Because my brother and my sister won't let me live it down at all. They won't let nothing go by all the memes that get sent to me, including my sister. She's 22, by the way, his name's Gentry. I just graduated from UTK. She's living in Nashville down there. Chilling out. Awesome. Thanks for sharing that with us and your personal mm -hmm. story. Let's look ahead to the Falcons now week two. Feel like a long time before you can get back on the field in search of that first win with the extra days in between? Uh, yeah, but it's nothing that we don't need, I would say for sure. Yeah. So I'm glad that we get that time off. Uh, one of the focuses will be Kyle Pitts, uh, one of the rising stars at your position in the National Football League, first pick of the Falcons a couple of years ago and a pro bowler already. Are you familiar with him? And would you care to break down his game a little bit if so? Um, I, I'm familiar with him. I know uh, I respect his game a lot. I think he's... um. Definitely a versatile player. Um, he's made some plays already while he's been in the league, only been in here one year. So I know he's got a lot of anticipation. Uh, it's nothing that I don't think our defense can't handle, of course, but I understand that um, when I said versatile, I meant that he can block and he's a good receiving a tight end. So as long as our defense can shut down that threat that he stands on, whether it's outside or in the slot, um, I think we'll be good. I think do you have a favorite tight end in the NFL growing up or do you have one now? Uh, it used to be Tony Gonzalez. I liked watching his old his old old film. Kind of a little grainy sometimes back in the like when he first started playing. A little <laughs> great. Like now, I can't tell if I'm there or if I'm watching it on the TV. You know, so it's when you get your turn on there. Thursday night football, he's gonna come up to you and find that clip. <laughs> yeah, right. He said I was old. Yeah, my fault. My fault, Tony. Um, but uh, yeah. All right, well, let's finish with the uh, segment here we call Three and Out. It's the way we wrap up each edition of Rams Revealed. Uh, three really challenging questions for you here, Bryson, before we get you on your way to your off day. If you get them all right, though, I will make a donation to the LA Rams Foundation on your behalf. Sound good? Let's go. All right, let's start with this. Your first NFL touchdown is still out there somewhere. It's been a long time between scores. How anxious are you to get it, and do you have a plan for the celebration to uphold Tyler Higby's legacy on this team when you get it? <sighs> I think I got to spike it. You know, I don't have a plan. I feel like every tight end's mentality going in is you don't know if you're going to spike it or not. And then it just, the blood starts rushing and it's mm -hmm. just automatic. So I'll probably have to spike it, but I don't have a plan. Just thank God and move on to the next one. Your plan should be if you spike it, who's going to retrieve it so that you get it back. That's, your that's a good idea. Kicks. I'll spike it and then I'll just run after it immediately. Just get it. Uh, favorite teammate on the Rams to talk to on the sidelines during a game. There's a lot of time to kill during an NFL game that we don't really see well i probably talk to higgs the most just because we're always sitting in the general area because um and he's you know a lot of people don't know that guy's a clown too you know he's he's a character um that's just kind of the people that i get along with the most but uh higgs is a funny guy do you guys yeah. go to tight end you together this summer yeah we did that? me him and kendall yeah how was, was that experience it was great it was it was like just as hot as it was out here a few days ago but um it was a great experience to get all the tight ends together and uh, you know, we had uh, George running it and um, Kelsey was there. And then Josh Allen came in and threw with us and we got to work with kids and did a whole little uh, like youth camp type deal. So it was really fun. All right. Nice. Final question here on three and out your two for two, of course. Yeah. Uh, everyone in my neighborhood is moving to Nashville. I'm losing neighbors to Tennessee left and right. How come? It's because out here, they get all you got is taxes and traffic. That's all it is <laughs> in Nashville. Now everybody's moving, creating 
the traffic, and now I wouldn't be surprised if they just bring over California taxes anyway. So you, that you got my two cents on the deal. I don't want. I'm getting hot over here just talking about it. So yeah. Fortunately, you're able to get in the uh, real estate mar- market before all of California. I right? was. My mother helped me out, so I was lucky because I mean, I'm just renting out here. I don't. I'm never gonna buy anything out here. <laughs> if I could buy weather, I'd bring it over to Nashville, but that can't happen either. So. Well, Bryson, thank you for stopping by for this edition of Rams Revealed. It's good to get to know you a little bit better here at the outset of year three. I hope it's a career year for you and uh, one of many, many more to come with the Los Angeles Rams. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Bryson Hopkins, I'm JB Long. The Atlanta Falcons are at SoFi Stadium uh, this Sunday in week two. This has been Rams Revealed, presented by NFL All Day.